Uh, again, we're again big fans of the of the music, like uh, your solo freestyles and Poisonous Poets as well, like legends. <laughs> so yeah, okay. again, this is this is one of the sort of good things about having a podcast is is occasionally you get to speak to people that we like really really admire. So like, yeah, this is uh, this is cool. Thank you. But um, thank you. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know really what we're going to... We've got some sort of generic questions and stuff, but I thought we'd just have a chat unless there's anything you really want to speak about, mate. Like, um, No, I'm I'm here, like, I'm along for the ride, bro. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm fully involved in, like, the, the conspiracy stuff that um, that you lot work around. Yeah. Like, I'm fascinated by it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm absolutely fascinated by it. But the, uh, the work you put in of, like, don't be too hard on them. Do you know, like, because yeah. it's really easy yeah. to turn around to someone and just want to shake them and just oh. be like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But that the, the way that you kind of, uh, like, help people to, to get into it and, like, all right, don't try the aggressive approach or the like, antagonistic. Just try and see it from their point of view kind of thing. See where they, they might have. And it's just it's just really good because, like I said, sometimes you just want to shake somebody. It's, you know what I mean? You're just like, yeah, what's yeah. wrong with you? Oh, yeah. But what, what is this? Uh, we, we, but this is sort of our angle on it. We both sort of came from that community. We were like really quite heavily involved with it. And like, you know, this, this is the thing, like the people involved with it are usually chill guys. A lot of them very into sort of like hip hop and like, you know, gangster films and that sort of stuff. You know, this sort of culture, mm-hmm. lots of people smoke a little bit and stuff like that. And, and most of the time they're just out there, they're trying to, um, you know, they, they want to make the world a better place, basically. Don't know. This is the thing. So this is why they're looking at, 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 at systems. And they've got a, a healthy skepticism mm-hmm. of systems. Because, like, I mean, this is the thing, right? Okay. Conspiracies absolutely do happen. It's it's 100% right to be sceptical and be wary of systems of control and large corporations and, uh, and stuff like that. So that that's not it. But I think... It's it's a sort of multifaceted thing, isn't it? Like you know, the internet is is it became a, a massive sort of thing for spreading these things. When we were into this, when we first started getting this, YouTube didn't even exist. Like, do you know, she... yeah. So you had to like send off a books and DVDs and stuff, and actually <laughs> bother to watch the entire thing and stuff. Whereas now you can just ping around like, um, the you know the the, the sentences and stuff like that. So. This is the thing. We've got to yeah. be a, a bit more involved with it in order to, if you want to like get people back on the right path, you've got to sort of, you've got to recognize the, the, the stupid things that you would have done yourself. Not stupid. That's the wrong word, but you know what I mean? The reasons that you'd want to get involved in these things, the reasons that you'd want to sort of spend hours and hours researching these sorts of things and the sort of mindset that you have to get into in order to sort of, uh, in order to, to believe them. And again, the, the the tricky thing is that some of them are true. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's it. So this there's, is the thing. Some of them at least have a nugget of truth. You know, mm. that's yeah. what we find. But yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's the best way to get someone, is it? You don't tell someone a straight out lie. You tell them ninety percent lie, ten percent truth. Yeah. And then that ten percent truth is the bit that they latch onto, mm. and the, then that slowly grows, and then that grows into a hundred percent of something. And they've ignored the ninety percent that's not true, and they're just everything is nah. Yeah, it's this based off this ten percent. It's everything. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's a very like I, it can be dangerous. I guess. Oh, totally. You no, know, yeah. it can be quite, quite dangerous. But yeah, it's um like I'm fascinated by it. Like I used to be fully involved. Like I love a good conspiracy yeah. theory. <laughs> you know, like the whole moon landing type of thing. I remember being in school. We would have books, uh, like magazines getting into it. No, because look, the flag doesn't move and look what he says over here and da 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 and you're like, yeah, oh. Yeah. And then like as a 15, 16, you're like, what? They didn't go to the moon. Mm. And then you kind of, you, you get a little older and you need, context is an amazing thing. Yeah. Like, just why the context and okay, you're so focused on that part that you haven't seen all of that bit over there. And then as soon as you get that context, you're like, oh, well, that kind of explains that part. All right, that kind of exp- oh oh okay, so all right, we went to the moon. Then. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. But yeah, it's it's proper, it's proper weird, man. But yeah, people just get fully sucked in. How long were you like, if you don't mind me asking, how long were you just involved in it for? Oh, you go I, first. I Brent. myself was like in in. 
I'd, I'd say a complete believer for like 15 years. So from 2003 to 2018, I was fully in like, yeah, the Illuminati exist. It's they're a, a satanic cabal of pedophiles and they run practically the entire world. The police are in their hands. The criminals are in their hands. Everybody is in control, essentially, you know, so sometimes like you would drop lines like you dropped the chemtrails so you know the poison lines yeah. over your head like chemtrails and I'm yeah like, yeah Damn, he knows what he's talking about yeah. <laughs> back in the day man yeah <laughs> i thought do you know what it doesn't even occur to me that those things will have a different meaning depending on the listener yeah yeah like it, it, i'm kind of assuming that you just get the punchline it's do you know what i mean yeah. rather than like you're thinking that oh me, bro. You're speaking. <laughs> <to> me, bro. <laughs> wow, wow, that's uh, so. What led you out of it? What was it that that made you think I can't do this anymore? A, a real long story, but essentially it was like I can boil it down to watching politics actually be in play. All right, like I used to believe, obviously, all the all the elections were completely rigged, like in UK, America, mm -hmm. Europe, whatever. All of them are rigged because, like, the cult owns everything. So leaders are leaders are e uh, selected, not elected. Simple as. Uh -huh. But like between yeah. 2015 and 18, I saw so much like political activism making shit happen, and it was like Trump, Brexit, and Corbyn, and these were all kind of things that were anti the new world order. Yeah. But it was real people actually putting it into play. And it's not a thing that the New World Order would allow to happen. So that was like, yeah. to to be fair, like that's kind of the things that really starts to really just make the entire thing start to crumble. Like you said, I get okay. context for that. And then I start building context around everything else. I kind of yeah. believe, you know? Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense, man. Like, yeah, I think the context is everything. Because, I mean, there's just little things I've even, not conspiracies, but little things you think you know. And then you find out, then you learn a little bit more and you get wider context. And you're like, oh, I, I, the little nugget of the grain of truth that I thought I knew. Turns out I didn't really know anything. Now I, I know far more because I've looked into it and I've, I've researched it a little more. Mm. Um, that's, yeah, I find it fascinating, man. How about yourself, bro? Um, well, mine was slightly different because I was actually, just prior to COVID, I was working with like iconic David Icke and was, was part of the scene but because I wrote a couple of books about mind control and was interested in, in in that sort of aspect of it, and what happened with me was basically I started looking at Brexit and this thing called Cambridge Analytica, which is like it's it's a manipulation program where basically they sort of feed you internet stuff in order to make you really angry, and it, they ultimately it's there to try and sort of like direct your vote in, in a in a way, and I was like, yeah. no way. I've stumbled across a genuine, actual conspiracy. It's a real conspiracy. There's, there's evidence. There's a plot. There's people behind it. There's even a sort of, like, religious, evangelical movement that's connected to the oil industry that is sort of driving this for for political and for, you know, monetary means, right? It, it, it's, it's a real thing. No way. This is crazy. And I was, was fascinated by this and talking to everybody about it. And no one gave a shit. Absolutely nobody in the alternative media gave a shit because because <laughs> there was no lizard people and it yeah. went against the existing trope. And the existing trope was that the EU is bad because the EU is is the first step towards a new Nazi Europe. Um, that, that is sometimes it also... Then also sometimes these, these great replacement theories, which is the opposite. But basically the point was that they didn't fit in the sort of in the milieu and so nobody was bothered about it and i was like oh that's a bit disappointing this is a real thing hey ho plug away then two things happened right one covid happened and i literally witnessed people just ignoring reality because that better suited their audience and i watched people within the industry lie to their audience because that's what their audience wanted to see. And I was like, this isn't what it's about. This is, this is absolute fucking bullshit, basically. Uh, and it's dangerous. It is completely mm -hmm. dangerous. Um, and the combination of the ignoring reality and this just the fucking stupidity around COVID and then, and then the willingness to spread that 
that lie because that's saleable, because that's what the market, so to speak, wants to hear. I was like, I don't want to be involved in this no more. It was, it, it was, it was too much, basically, because it, it, to my mind, it went totally against the whole purpose of it. The whole purpose is to hold power to account, right? What's coming out now is what I was saying actually during COVID is that the government don't give a shit about you. They're not trying to lock you down. They're not trying to imprison you. They're not trying to um, introduce experimental things or anything like that. They, they're trying to manage this for the uh, financial betterment of their donors. That is the one and only driving factor in how they're dealing with this crisis. And lo and behold, as the inquiry is going on, this is basically what is being found, uh, but that, that, that is exactly what it was. Again, alternative media did not want anything to do with that. They were on the sort of, oh, if we lock down now, we'll have to lock down forever. Viruses don't <laughs> exist. I think that maybe it's the phone system that's killing everybody, you know, stuff like that. And so, yeah, it just, I was like, I'm done. This party is it's got old i'm bored with it i'm walking away with from it because it's it's not um it's not honest like it's just ridiculous it's called the truth movement and it's not it's a collective not always again right but in the sort of hype and when it gets to the sort of international sort of famous sort of stuff it's it's a collective larp it's it's pitting yeah. yourself as a freedom fighter um I, and usually for very good reasons, but often that involves going after the sillier things like QAnon and Pizzagate and stuff like that, because basically, you know, they've got underground tunnels and aliens and stuff like that, as opposed to the, the real things like looking at something like uh, the, the mishandling of, uh, of the COVID situation that led to thousands of unnecessary deaths or Grenfell or why something like that should happen or where all the money went and stuff like that, genuine actual conspiracies that, that affect you and I, that ultimately, again, we're going to be paying for through our taxes. But, but that's, that, that's they're not interested in that. Because it's not sexy enough. It's not sexy enough. This is the thing. And, and yeah, it, it annoys me, to be quite honest. But, hey, hey, sorry, that's my little rant for the evening. Yeah, no, that, bro, I'm genuinely, like, it, it makes perfect sense. Man. How did you find, like, the, the, the fallout? Because, I mean, you said you, you wrote books about yeah, stuff yeah. and whatnot. How was it from the people that were around you? How did they respond to it? Some, of it, some people are still quite, like, loyal, so to speak. You know, they're, they're fans. They're still fans and, and such like that. And they've actually even right. sort of gone along and gone, yeah, actually, some of the, the other old, old, old stuff is a bit silly now. A lot of it was quite brutal. Um, I, they immediately assumed that I've been got at by the government. It didn't help that a year ago today, did basically, we were on a panorama program um, talking about this very thing. And, and again, the irony of it was that the irony of it was that I was on there to defend this guy who had done this conspiracy about Manchester. And although I didn't agree with his theory, my, I was told. Look, if you don't go on there and defend him, it's going to be no one defending him. So it's up to you. So I did. And I went on and it didn't really work because nobody cared. Oh. Like, like, so, you know. Um, All they cared was that you was on there and you were yeah. with Mariana Spring and that was evil. And so and what I was saying was that this, this guy, although he's got it wrong and although he's upset a lot of people, he's not gone out there to do that. He's not a troll or anything like that. He thinks of himself as like more of a journalist like a Woodward and Bernstein, and he's and like he's uncovered this, this the, he's uncovered this crazy thing, and he can't understand why the rest of the world can't see it because he's trying to help you, like do you know what I mean? Like every sort of paranoid bloke in every film ever, like that's that's what he thinks is going off. It doesn't yep. mean that that he's not hurt some people. He doesn't need to apologise, but it explains it and humanises it because this is a, you know. He'd done an Alex Jones essentially. You know how Alex Jones had said that Sandy Hook was fake. He 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 oh, theorised, okay. yeah, that Manchester was fake, which is is obviously, she we say problematic in in a number of just a little, just a little, yeah, yeah. It's it's horrific, really. And the thing is, not to, again, not to excuse him, but at the time. Uh, the climate within the alternative media, everything was fake all of a sudden and, and for some stupid reason. And, and so 
and Alex Jones was was in the newspapers and and like not actually getting any consequences. In fact, if anything, he was actually getting a boost, like a signal boost from for and and for a time. The more outrageous thing that you said, the more likely you were to get in the newspapers. Say that basically there was a guy that I knew that said that aliens were going to invade the um, uh, Olympics, got in the newspapers. Like th- this, this was the thing. There, there was another person that was talking about, I forget exactly, it was something to do with the Titanic, got in the newspapers. And, and so, I don't know, there was this, this sort of furore that was coming from all angles where... I could actually get a bit of, like, you know, cash and a bit of fame off this. Also, the audience at that time is really, like, going, I mean, you must know what it's like. Sometimes the audience, like, it, it spurs you on to do stuff that you might not, <laughs> might not have done if, you know, if they weren't there. Um, yeah. And so, that, so yeah, this is this is what happened, really. And so, yeah, so I went on there to, to not to sort of to, to defend the action, but to defend the person. Uh, and people weren't happy with that at all. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I can <laughs> well. But it's interesting you say like about uh, the COVID mm. because it was, it's like, I think, $3 trillion that went from the poorest of society to the richest 1% yeah. like of the world. And no one's batted an eyelid about it. No, like, and if you want a conspiracy, yeah, yeah. There's, like, that's a genuine conspiracy. The, the same with the uh, like the PPE. Yeah. Like, where has the money gone? It's like 32 billion. Where has the money gone? And no one's talking about it. The usual conspiracy theory, the people who I know who love a conspiracy theory, like my brother's one of them. He loves it. He loves it. He used to, he used to tell me a thing about, uh, maybe you've heard of this one, um, but like people finding wires under their skin. Oh, um, yeah. What's it called? Um, oh, um, Thank you. More, more, yeah. More more, say that again. Disease is it? Oh, it, it might. That might be the one. I, yeah. But a few years ago, he was telling me about this thing, and he was telling me there's all this research and da 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 da. And I thought you said stuff like this before. Let me give it two or three years, and then we'll see if you still remember having said this. But then he'd moved on to something else yeah. uh, by then, and he that yeah that, no no it wasn't. I don't remember saying that. I don't remember that. Um, <laughs> But it's like, yeah, there's a real, there's an actual real thing where all of this money, your money, our money, taxpayers' money has just been s- snatched away, yep, yep. siphoned off. Mm. And people are just like, just, yeah. And that's the kind of thing that really, is that because, again, it's not sexy? Yeah, because, that what, that, because sorry, sorry to cut you off, but it's even more annoying than that because basically within the alternative and conspiracy milieu, that is like a headline. But it's always the caveat because basically it's like all the the greatest wealth transfer from poor to rich ever. But Andy was a fake pandemic, and he's like, "Oh, for Christ's sake, you were so close!" Like, but and then and then that's not what they're interested in. They're interested in the fake pandemic and then vaccines or whatever. But so so that does get slightly mentioned. But 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 this is the thing. That's the thing that everybody should be focusing on. Because as yeah, you say, yeah. it's a real conspiracy and it's the, the actual evidence. Like, you know. They, <laughs> it's like literally, it's, it happened. It happened. Uh, exactly. I, I, I think that the problem comes, it, it, because that's been slightly on the news though, that is considered the distraction. And and you've got people so wound up and contrary to the point where if, if it says on the news that it's raining, they'll go, no, it's not. What, what, what's big weather trying to hide? It's clearly not. I'm not looking outside to check. I know that it's not raining because it says that it is raining on the television. And and that was what, what happened with COVID. It says there's a pandemic and everyone went, well, there's not then. Like, yeah. and it's, it's, it's mental. Like, absolutely crack. It's gl- like global. I saw a stand-up comedian um, and he said, like, everyone's talking about this this. Uh, there's a conspiracy, it's a fake pandemic and all the leaders have got together and he was like bro, we can't agree on plugs yeah, <laughs> you can't take a plug from England and go anywhere in Europe <laughs> Asia, Africa, I'm like you can't do it, but somehow they've come together and it, and I'm like, it was really, I know it was tongue in cheek but it was kind of like really, yeah bro like think about it, well, this... these, these people genuinely hate each other yes. they, they're trying yes. to get one up like massive countries, countries are at war currently. Yeah. And you think that it wouldn't be like, oh no, they're lying to you. Here's the evidence. Like what some country would come out and get every, the whole world on their side. 
But it's, it's like, bro, look, like, look, think. Like, do you know it? Uh, no, 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 yeah, it's crazy. That's right. You saying about they hate each other is something I, re I learned after coming out of the rabbit hole. I could actually watch oh, them wow. actually hating yeah. each other, <laughs> like not wanting each other to be in power and just like the backstabbing, all of that. And it, it just, I don't know, it, it just all of a sudden became, oh, this isn't a facade. Like I did mm. used to think all of it was a facade, you know, like they just were playing, but I can genuinely well, the, see they, the, hate, the, they hate each other. Well, the problem is, isn't it? There's, there's that sort of circular logic that is like, in order for them to massively coordinate everything, then all this surface tension or this surface hate must be fake, which, which implies that behind the scenes, everything is like totally, totally controlled. And that's the answer. Yeah. Like the answer is the thing that, we, that isn't actually visible, that we don't know to be true, yeah. is the explanation for how they've done it and appeared not to do the opposite. It, it, it's batshit. And this is the thing. It's like when, when you start to look at certain conspiracies, like like you kind of did with the, the moon landing or whatever earlier, and you go, like we did with Epstein, right? Okay, now, don't get me wrong, right? I'd have loved it if we'd have thought that he'd been murdered. But when you start to look at it, you go, all right, well, hang on. Who got into his room? How? What was the... the <laughs> seriously, how, how was it done? And we... we came down to the conclusion that actually it doesn't really matter right he shouldn't have been given the opportunity to he should have gone to trial in many ways the fact that he's dead uh, uh whether he, he, he did it by himself or not it is is not important what's important was yeah. how he was allowed to be able to die and not face his accusers or not go to trial and not sort of like speak to the wider potential conspiracy right so yeah. but when you actually look at it you go all right, okay, you'd have to have got someone into the prison. Is there any evidence that someone got into the prison? No. Is there any evidence that any other prisoners got out of their cell? No. Is there any evidence that, that anyone was in the cell with him or anything like this? No, there's not. Like, and that's how you've got to sort of break it down, like, basically. You, 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 like, you've got, to, you've got to try and sort of, like, if it's based on these four pillars or whatever, if that one's not true and this one's not true and this one isn't true and we don't know about this one, then does it, meta, no you know, figuratively hold any weight, collapse. basically? Yep. Yeah. So when you break something down like that to someone, how receptive, like, how receptive do you find people, I, I guess, like, some people are willing to to follow, but like if you break it down like those four pillars, yeah. and you're like, all right, that one, that one, that one. Some people will be like, do you know what? That makes sense, and I'm, I'm with you. Like, how is it for the people who look at that, and then they say, like, how do you deal with those people who are just adamant that it's it is this? Even though I can't explain yeah, that, yeah. I can't explain that or that or that, but I still believe. How do you go about helping them? I guess. I mean, just by being kind, really, and just like I mean, there are a certain amount of people that are never going to get get, Sorry, bro. get that. Kindness wins every time. <laughs> I mean, I kindness just prefer hitting them over the head with it over and over and over. <laughs> to be fair, when it's on Twitter, <laughs> nah. Well, it depends I mean, on the good faith it, or bad faith, though, doesn't it, really, Neil? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, in in as much as right, okay, you you've got to go all right, fine, and just not. If you like that person or whatever, you've got to just like it's okay to disagree, right? Do you know what I mean? It's not that important a lot of the time. If you think that and I think this, it I, I go right, okay, well look, I like lots of music that you think is stupid, right? Let's just think of it like that. And then hopefully then you'll get another one. And this this is what happens because the problem is as well, is like you're attacking a lifestyle. This is something where basically people have got a community and they've got friends and they've got an identity based out of this. So if you suddenly snatch that away from them, right, okay, they're not going to like that. And also, again, this is, this is an action that's born out of wanting to do good in the world, right? So if you're like kind of kicking them in the balls over something where basically they're like, do you know what? I could have been out fucking doing anything, right? Okay. Instead, I was actually in here reading this and trying to make the world a better place. And now you're telling me that I was tricked. Well, like, cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Yeah. But it, it depends on how you frame it. And like one of the things that sort of got me into the sort of the other side of it is, when you're into conspiracy theories and stuff like that, you like working things out. Like you like getting answers. Do you think of the world as like a bit of a puzzle or whatever? Okay. Mm -hmm. When you're kind of doing it the opposite way, 
it's kind of like undoing the magic trick. So, so do you know what I mean? So if you can frame it in that way, where basically you're learning why people thought that, not whether that's true or not, but why people thought that and stuff like that. And then you can start to, to sort of to, to, to build it up like that and go, oh, you know how I used to know that, that Satanism is dry in, in the Capitol building because of X, Y, and Z? Well, now I know why people thought that. And it's not, it's something different or whatever, okay. However, and this is the important thing, like like what you were speaking about just, just now, basically, once you dismiss all that nonsense and stuff like that, once you dismiss COVID isn't real, that the, the vaccines aren't a bioweapon designed to kill you and stuff like that, then you can look at the actual conspiracies, which is that, again, people needlessly died because of the mismanagement of it. Money was, was embezzled and misappropriated. Um, and... Uh, and essentially, yeah, like you know, did, did, that's the, that's the the real conspiracy, and they, they're real world conspiracies. They, they, they don't have aliens in them, like, but or underground tunnels. Well, sometimes they have underground tunnels, like, but but not often. And so, <laughs> like, uh, so yeah, that kind of like that. But it's it's one of these really where, that, as you say, there is a certain uh, person that was he's never going to come out of that. Like, they, they're just not going to. And the more that you you show them something, the more that they'll just double down, or more than likely, what they'll do is the, the usual thing is like, oh, well, you're you're a government agent, or you're seventy seventh, which is like this internet thing. Um, it, it's just a way of like dismissing an argument, basically. Like, uh, okay, yeah, like so. So you do get that a lot. Brent gets it far more than me because Brent's more sort of active on on Twitter, but but. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter is a Twitter is no place to go for like critical thinking no. or emotional intelligence or people who recognize their own bias. Like you just check that at the door yeah. before you get onto Twitter. It's it's incredible sometimes some of the stuff you see. You know there. what though? Yeah. And, and I, I don't wish to get all conspiratorial, right? Okay, but it's fucking designed like that. It's designed yeah. to do that, <laughs> right? Okay, it is. No, it is. It is right. It's a game, yeah. right? And, and the point of the game is to stay in the game forever, right? And and how it does that, like gambling, it gives you a dopamine hit every time you say something. Like you get a little bit hit of dopamine. And here's the fucked thing, right? Okay. You get dopamine hits from either being happy because someone's agreed with you or being angry because you disagree with someone else. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, they, you know, like Fox News and stuff like that, right? Okay. They know that that's their business model. Rat-a-tat-tat opinion things that get people going, you yeah, believe this, <laughs> Daily Mail, that sort of stuff. Like it's all like made to sort of make the blood boil. And in a similar way, social media is designed to do that. It's like gambling, but you're gambling with social information. And here's the messed up thing as well, is that the more that you stay on there, the more your brain starts to go, you get more dopamine if you do this. You, you get, And so it's going to drive you one way or the other. So you're either going to be in an angry echo chamber, getting dopamine like that, or you're going to mould your personality to say things that people like, and you're going to get your yeah. dopamine fix like that. And yeah, and the, and the the scary thing is that basically the people who were making this they knew this when they were de designing it. They 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 realised that this was a this is a good tool to market people basically. Uh, and that's even before you start getting into sort of the, all the disinformation and misinformation on there. Uh, like you know, uh, and or like so yeah, it's a mess. Like bloody hell. Like I, it, in many ways we were quite lucky because. We can at least remember a time when it wasn't there, so you can compare it and go sort of like, I give a shit if I'm not on Twitter for a couple of days or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? For some kids, I assume it's their life. It's where they have their social interaction. I was saying this like the other day. It's like my mate's kid. He, he spends it like, what are you doing? Go and hang out with your mates. And he's like, no, no, no. We are. We're having a hangout on FIFA or whatever. And I'm tempted yeah. to give the little sod a bottle of cider and a fucking hammer. And tell him, right, <laughs> go down the park now, right? Because there is an age when when hijinks <laughs> become criminality, and and you and you don't want to miss that. Like you know, yeah. it's, an, it's an important stage of your life, isn't it? It's a learning process exactly. that be there, isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah. You can't do it. Like it looks bad going hedge hopping when you're like thirty five. Like it's sinister. <laughs> it is. It's more difficult to explain away. 
like than when you're 14. So yeah, so you need to get these things out of your system. But uh, yeah, that's funny because I tell my kids that like when my kids were small, I'd like make as much noise as you want because there's gonna be a point where it's just unacceptable for you to make noise. You're gonna get to an eight, and it's not all right for you to make noise like that anymore. So see why you're like, take advantage. Like the way do you know how, how I see it? See the swings yeah. in the park. Swings are like the greatest invention known to man. Keep your internet, keep the game of football, keep Premier League, put me on a swing <laughs> and just let me go back and forward, right? I do that happily for hours. Now I'm 45 years old. I'll look like a lunatic sitting on a swing, <laughs> right? There's a, there's a proper narrow window when you've got the opportunity to do it. Uh, yeah, same say, thing, man. Keep, I was going to say, get your own that swing in your own back garden. But then as I thought that through, that's even worse. Like, imagine the neighbours just watching. Is Tony on his swing again? Yes, he is. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, that like comes some sort of pied piper trying to get like, hey, you want to come and play on me swing? Come on, it's all right. Uh, oh, man. Oh, yeah, dear. that's wow. But, but yeah, give him give him the cider and a hammer, bro. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> it's Christmas, isn't it? So that that's what I'll get him. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I can just imagine his dad's face at Christmas morning as he unwraps a big bottle of white light. <laughs> It'd love it. It'd bring back memories. Like, <laughs> but yeah, but, the, but yeah, but, um, but this is the thing. Like you know, but but as we we see, grown adults can't cope with the internet. So God knows our children are doing good. Like it would. I am so glad that I'd never had Twitter when I was like 18 because some of the stupid shit I would have said, like, and been proud of it, gone, and what? Yeah. <laughs> if you can't deal with that, like, you know, and, and only later thinking, oh my God, what an idiot. Like, so, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah I'm happy I grew up before the internet age, like, way, way. And like, I see certain kids, they, they record themselves committing crimes. Yes. And I'm like, who? Who's raised you? Like, because, like, the number one criteria for criminality is don't get caught. Like, don't tell anybody that you did it. And these these kids are like, yeah, look what we do. We're out here doing crime. We're like, bro, they're going to put you in jail. And they're going to rightfully put you in jail. Could you filming yourself doing it? Yeah. yeah. It's a weird, weird time. Yeah, yeah. it is, isn't it? Lot of, uh... Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, but... but... It's almost as if it's not real unless it's on the screen. Like, this is the thing. Like, and that, there's a reflection of that, like, in, in everywhere. Like, I'll give you an example. It might sound a bit silly, but, like, our town centre, like, in Nottingham, there's, like everywhere, dying, shops and stuff like that. What you've got is you've got a load of restaurants, and all the restaurants have got glass windows. Because it, it strikes me that the point of it is not to be there and have the experience. It's to be seen having the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is a sort of weird fucking Blade Runner way of living life, isn't it? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, where the sort of reality is almost secondary to to other people's viewing of that reality, or you're being able to retell that back. Here you go. Look on. Look on my Insta. And look at like how fabulous my life was in the in the, the past. Even though it's like you know ten minutes ago, it's still yeah. like everyone's living on dead memory. Basically, what a bleak way to think of it. <laughs> and I think it's kind of accurate, though, to be honest. I like it, kind of, it is that thing. It's like why I'm sometimes on my Twitter, I'll point out when it's been a bad day or when something's not gone quite right or when something like because it's important. I know I have a following, I know people who like I've got X amount of thousand followers, and I know a lot of them think like, oh, he, he raps. And he does this battle rap. So everything is that battle rap. Like, that's not my world. Like, I, like I, I do one battle a year. I've done one battle a year for the last four years. Um, so that's 364 days that I'm not doing that thing. Like, yeah. life is not always like that. And I think it's important to show people that, like, yeah, I'm tired. I didn't sleep well last night. I've got bills to pay. I've got this. And, like, things are not going that, like, it could be way better. Mm. You know, but I just just to show people, you know, I'm in the same boat as you are. I don't think because you see me on a screen from time to time that it's different. Like I live the same life you do. I, I have to go to work in the morning. I've got a mortgage to pay. Like these are the things you have to do. And I think it's kind of uh, like influencers on social media never show that part of life. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, yeah. that's and it's really important to let people know because, and like I work in year six, so. 
I've got a lot of like 10 and 11 year olds mm. who look at, they consume this media and think they have an idea of what life should be like yes. because their life should be like these people here. Why are their parents' lives not like these people on the screen? Yeah. So they're trying to, they're going to do their best to have a life like this. And I'm trying to explain to them, that's not real. Nah. Like, like, look at that. It's a photo. It's just one photo. That's a second. Mm. There's like, do you know what I mean? There's 1,440 minutes in a day and you've, you've taken a second out of it. The rest of his day could have been absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. But you're just looking at this, this timestamp, this frame here. And it, it will have a, a, I'm pretty sure it will have a, a detrimental effect mm. over the next 10 to 20 years, man. When when these, when the, the real younger generation grows up and goes into adulthood, man, I'm, I'm kind of worried for it a little bit. Well, I mean, if you think about sort of like how realistic everyone's prospects were when we were kids, like you... you he knows he now as much as like you, you. You kind of thought in the back of your mind, I probably won't have to do this work shit for very long because I don't know whether <laughs> the universe has figured out, but I'm quite special, and um, <laughs> like, and I'll probably get a brilliant job doing something really creative and fun and blah 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 blah. And like, and then when you realise that you have to do the entry level and you have to grind through it and shit like that. Uh, and our aspirational heroes were in sort of magazines and stuff like that, Hollywood and blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. these guys are in their, their pockets. Like, do you know what I mean? And they act as if they're their friends and kind of yeah. with the influencers yeah. as well. Yeah. Like, you know, the cultivating of this parasocial relationship is the sort of marketing thing. Like, who is it that, like, uh, that your like, um, the kids are actually into then? Who are the influencers that are sort of popular? Um, there's a kid at, I, I can't, I don't know how to say his name, Kat Sinai. Um, I don't know, but he would, he just met, he was at the Ballon d'Or yesterday shaking hands with um, Harland. Right. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's like a quite a popular one. Um, to be honest, I try to stay, or they, they show me this stuff and I'm like, I, I get, it's too much information. Yeah, like yeah. I, I can't get <laughs> all on. Um, but it's, it's essentially just YouTubers. There are people who just play games. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. And yeah, and they are super. If you're on between the age of like six and sixteen, these people are massive to you. Like, um, and it's literally yeah, they just play games. And the worst thing I think for me is they're not particularly intelligent people. No, I think that's the part that really gets me. Um, like because you've got I don't know twenty, thirty million children following you on this platform and like you did you spout stuff yeah and these kids leave it and there's there's not like you haven't you, there's no research done you don't know if that's true um you, you don't even offer an opposing argument to it you just say this stuff and then a bunch of 11 year olds are listening like yeah he said it, it must be true and then they're building their own narrative around this they're building a lifestyle around this thing and it's like it's it's all going to come tumbling down. Yeah. But, and it's when it does, it's really going to hurt these kids. These kids are going to come out into the real world and be like, oh, how do I now deal with this? Um, the, the fact that none of this was true. None of, like, I'm not special. Yeah. I can't just get a YouTube channel and, and blow up the way he did. I, I don't have that. Whatever it is that it takes to make that thing happen, the stroke of luck, even perhaps. Mm. But luck is a bigger factor than any successful person will like to give credit for. Yeah. Like, luck is a really important um, uh, factor in it. But yeah, if you're not that lucky, if you if you just don't happen to get that, how do you, and a lot of these kids don't have the emotional resilience to then say, oh, well, it didn't work out like that. Well, back to the drawing board. Yeah. Maybe I'll just try this again or I'll listen to someone else. This crushes them, you know, absolutely crushes them. And yeah, it's a, it's a weird, weird, weird situation. The irony of that, right, is that the, who is popular, like in the sort of YouTube sphere? They they pick up like the sort of broader audience just on the on the sort of the fact that they're popular. They've got popular by appealing to children, and then that yes. feedback loop is just stuff that appeals to children. So all of their older audience are, are, are still emulating this this advice, which is directed and aimed at impressing children. And yes, it's that's that's really really dangerous isn't it when you think about it like that because like basically again like where's where's the sort of growth and where's the where's the incentive to to teach kids hard work as well there, there really isn't because the, the, you know as you say it's, it's, it's just it's easy to go i do this i do because that's what struck me it's like when i watched a few of these sort of 
podcast where it's just some people sat around a desk, some young <laughs> young people, disgustingly young, <laughs> and um, and I'm sat there thinking, this is a who the fuck cares what these people think? Like these, like, but but that's that's your answer. It's it's eleven year olds. It's children. Yeah, it's children. And the thing is, as well, it's probably deeper than that because they only care about that because some marketing uh, company has told them this is the person that you should care about, which is which is even worse. I mean, to an extent, right? Did everyone see the um, the girl that was crying because she realised that if you go to work nine to five, then you haven't got to think oh, yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I had mixed feelings about that because she's right. <laughs> she's absolutely right. She was bang on. Yeah. She she was a hundred percent bang on. There isn't a work life balance. No. It's this not how it is. No. And the, the main people who were really angry at her were all the people, the older generation, who sucked up the fact that there wasn't a work life balance and just said, "Well, this is how it is." Yeah. And like you've got a, a generation who says, "Well, it doesn't have to be." Yeah. And they're right. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we don't have to go to work five days or work two jobs. Mm. Or, that's not how it goes. Like some people don't have a job. Some people have two jobs. We can some we can balance that out yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, she was bang on. She was on the money. The, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. Oh, no you were, you're absolutely right. You know, but the thing was, I think those people were trying to talk about. They were criticizing her for, for her ideology. Right, where she's actually crit well, she is like the ideological, but she's criticizing the system. But the problem is yes. that everybody's in like in the system, and you'd knackered as well. I've got to the point where it's like, I, I don't know if I can be asked to smash the state. I might like you know, <laughs> like give it a dig in the ribs or something like that. But like, yeah, bloody hell, I've got stuff to be getting on with. Like, so he's playing up. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> yeah. Like you know. It's like it's done quite late, like, right? but yeah. Uh, so, but but there, but this is the tragedy, isn't it? That I remember vividly having a conversation, almost like a nervous breakdown, with uh, with with my mum when I was sort of early teens, where I worked out that, hang on, if I get paid X, that means that logically my boss must be making more than me. Otherwise, why would he hire me? And it's like, <laughs> who knew? As a as a little Marxist. But, but, but yeah, but I also remember my mum getting really angry at me because it's like, there's nothing you could do about it. Like, you do realise there's nothing you could do about it. Or there's nothing you can do about it immediately, is, is the thing. Like, you know, we need, um, we need to have a revolution. But that's, that's, that meeting is next week down by the docks, isn't it? So, like, so, so yeah, that's, that's still on the back burner. But, yeah. So, like, so, Jen, like, in in the sort of like hip hop and battle world, like conspiracy culture, it, is it does it run 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 quite thick through it? Yeah, uh, do you know what I mean? There's quite a prominent flat earther in uh, in the battle in the UK battle rap scene. There's, there's that allegedly um, Dave's son. Yes, I know Dave. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so well, his son. Yeah, he is of. Uh, he's very good. good. That he's. He's, oh, he's so good. He's so good. Um, but you know what's so funny to me is that I think, I honestly think as creative as he is, mm. he has to have a, a like a, a, his level of intelligence got to be somewhere up here. Yeah. And then, and then I hear him say this stuff and I'm like, those two things don't match for me. Mm. Like you're, to be that good at rapping, you've got to be this smart. And then to believe this, I don't know, I, I can't marry the two things together at all. I got an answer for you. It's Go the ahead. creativity itself. Yeah. The creativity ah. and being intelligent. You're you're able to imagine something and then you're smart Fill enough in to the convince gaps. yourself of it. Yeah. Like that is what I think is going on. That's what I think is going on with myself. Well, this is the thing, Tony, because like you'd think, you'd assume that particularly with a lot of conspiracy theories and like everything, like you do get some people who are like a bit thick or like whatever, like, like anything, like, but... <laughs> A huge amount of people that are into conspiracy is actually quite nerdy, quite bright, interested in really, really sort of like complicated things, just sort of like a bit left field and stuff like that. So it, it can happen, like basically. Like, I mean, Christ, who is that? Oh, Christ. Um, who's the, who's the um, um, Bobby Fischer, the chess champion, 
who became he was a absolute grandmaster genius. I think he I think he yeah. played against Deep Blue, the you know yeah. the computer, and um, yeah. he became convinced of a world Jewish con- con- conspiracy, and is still um, is still like a, a, a convinced of it. So yeah. In fact, we wow. did a joke about that. We said that Kanye West was the Bobby Fisher of pigeon chess. <laughs> <laughs> See, context. You need a couple of bits of context to make that joke work. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> But uh But, yeah. So, I, oh, yeah. So, he's a thing. Like, the only other one I've seen is, is, is this overtly about it is disaster, obviously, which, which is uh, different league. He's very sort of yeah. Like, uh, he's uh, some of the stuff I've heard him say is kind of like mm. all right. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to get into a conversation with you because he's also he's so there's so much energy yeah. in this. Like he's very passionate no matter what he does, yeah. and I, I'm not able for him to bombard me <laughs> with that. You're like, like I, I just won't be able to You're like super cool and laid back and just chill, bro. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's too much. Um, but I think like in hip hop, in UK hip hop, I would say there's far more cons- like did they lend conspiratorial kind of uh, uh, goes into UK hip hop more than UK battle rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of anti-vaxxers Is in there? UK hip Yeah. Um, there's a lot of Illum- like Illuminati, full belief in the Illuminati and certain secret societies yeah. and stuff. This is a big theme in UK hip hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I get where, where, I can kind of get that because it's, it's like, you know, it, depending on the level of your belief, like it becomes like a euphemism or sort of shorthand for corporate takeover, corporate controlled, like, yeah. you know, old money, that type of stuff. Uh, and then at the very, very extreme, it actually means, no, no, I'm, I'm actually talking about the physical embodiment of Lucifer on earth. Like <laughs> they, 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 they have monthly meetings. They have letter headed paper. Like it, it, they're, they're well into it. Like, so, so yeah, but, but sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I think because, like UK hip hop is on the fringes of mainstream. It's very counterculture. Mm. And I think conspiracies kind of tend to just follow on that same thing. It's outside of the mainstream. It, it, it's what people who don't want to do what they don't want to listen to what their parents did. Yeah, yeah. And they want to find their own, their own little community. And I like, it's very much full of people like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, and it's, it's only little counterculture. So I think it kind of goes hand in hand with, like the conspiracy mindset, yeah. I think they, they kind of marry quite well. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, anti vaxxers, that's quite a prominent one of the Illuminati. Um, I'm not sure, I, I don't know how many flat earthers there are in UK hip hop. As I said, I know there's I know there's one for certain in battle rap. Um, I don't know how they how it extends across the the UK hip hop kind of uh thing, but they are dead. Bunch of weirdos. I mean, like, I was going to talk yesterday. Like, do you ever sit back and think about how weird you are? Like, yeah. just individually. Like, there's sometimes I'm just being my house by myself and just do something. Like, the other day, I caught myself doing it. I went to open the oven, and as I did it, I just went, hoodie hoo! <laughs> For no reason at all. No reason. <laughs> and as I opened the oven, I realised what I'd done. And I was like, why did I do that? Like, what made me do that? that um but it's that's not the only time i do it i, do, I make that same noise quite frequently Fair um, enough. Yeah, follow your bliss I'm bro follow your bliss if it yeah. makes you happy do it yeah <laughs> i do stupid crazy weird shit all the time you know but like, that's that's the thing is you have to embrace your weirdness mm. you've got to well i'm i'm fully weird man I, and i love it you know so i'm not mad at other people who are weird as long as your weirdness is not hurting people go for it man yeah totally like, yeah. It, that's interesting the way that you frame it though, though, because I think that's right. I think it's more a sort of like an attitude, like an anti-mainstream attitude. Like, and and it depends again. Depend depends how you want, how cruel or which angle you want to look at it from. If you're not interested in the mainstream, you're driven to the sorts of things where someone might go. You ever read this David Icke book? You ever seen this Alex Jones thing? You ever seen this documentary about how Jack the Ripper was a Freemason or? JFK or whatever, like, do you know what I mean? Like, the flip side of that, which is, I think, where it gets too far, is where looking at everything that's not mainstream is because you are rejecting the mainstream because you feel that the mainstream has in some way rejected you. 
like in in yeah. a sort of like nah, that's just bullshit everything's bullshit like with flat mm-hmm. earth i've always like said this and i don't wish to be totally cruel but it's like if the rest of the the world was wrong about something as fundamental as the shape of the planet then they were wrong when they appraised me as a bit of a loser so do you know <laughs> what i mean like and yeah. when they find out that the earth is actually flat they'll think that i'm brilliant and maybe carol will let me see the kids again like <laughs> so and he's not not always like that he's the very extreme end of it but basically like yeah. do you know what i mean like it sort of boils down to that what what about in the sort of in the classroom with the like is there a conspiracy culture there or or are they surprisingly like this is bullshit like, it's... no i tell you what about hold on he's in my year six class now and this one he was in his he was in year two um a little kid i, uh, I, know, I nearly said his name <laughs> this little so kid, sure editive, class, right? um and i was reading we used to get these little newspapers for classrooms mm. right they're, they're just for school kids to read and the, the class teacher used to bring them in and i was he was looking at one of them we used to do it every morning and there was just a little thing about nasa and space and he was in year two which would have made him six i'm gonna say five or six maybe six seven but he was looking at it and he said space is fake my dad told me oh no no way and do you know like he was he's in year two he'd like he He's yeah. barely up to waist height. Yeah. And he's like, space is fake. And the, the funniest thing is that I spoke to him about it, this term that has just gone. Mm. And he now he believes in space now. Oh, good. He believes space is a real thing. Like, there's, there's, there's people sent rockets, there's a moon, you know what I mean? Like, you can go up there and stuff. But it, it, I had to ask him because it had been, like, four years. And I thought, I wonder if he still thinks that space is not real. Do you know what I mean? Like space, space is fake. Um, and yeah, so I, I put it to him and I asked him, and yeah, he was like, "Nah, but yeah, I believe in space. Space is real." He didn't even remember telling me that space wasn't real. He, he knows it's real because no. of the aliens. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gone too far the other way. Yeah, that is a tricky one, isn't it? Like, um, just like uh, I've seen that as well within the, the sort of conspiracy world. People sort of like proudly saying. Either and it's always either flat Earth or something to something to do with medicine, and it's always yeah, like, oh, these are these are the two things of all the things he could have picked. Like, did, <laughs> like be honest, right? Okay, it doesn't really matter if like little Johnny thinks that reptilians rule the planet. Like, all right, whatever. Like, okay, but if yes. he's not taking medicine because he thinks he's got a biochip in him, like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? This is where it becomes really dangerous. Yeah, this is the thing. And like I said, that was that was the thing that really, really annoyed me about the alternative media is like they they, they picked a horse and they're like, no, we, we're we're going with this one. We're going with this one all the way. And they're still doing it. Like there's still very, very prominent people like David Icke and stuff who's still saying like, huh, COVID inquiry. When are they going to admit that COVID never existed? It's like, uh, f- dude, <laughs> like come on, like. Get a different, and you know what's really stupid is like, it's a, it's a pride thing. Someone like David Icke has got such a following that he could pivot to the something else, right? And nobody yeah. would ever remember this. They'd just be on about he's on about Sebastian Frankis now. He's telling us that the moon is a spaceship and whatnot. Fine, whatever. There, there must be a reason that these people are still like flogging that dead horse of there's no such thing and it's because they know they're wrong and they're trying to convince <laughs> themselves that they're, they're right do you know what i mean do you know like when when you've done something terrible and you go to your mate like can't do it. no no seriously like, let's keep talking about it if we can keep talking <laughs> about it until somehow i frames me as the hero like then, <laughs> then, then alleviates me of all blame yeah. and responsibility i am the winner yeah, yeah. before the night's over actually they owe me some money. Like, <laughs> I don't think I owe them an apology at all. Like, so, so, yeah, this, this, is the, this is the problem, isn't it? But... You say David Icke. Archaic was a big, big follower of David Icke. How was he? Oh, was he? Yes. He used to go to his shows. Um, sure. Like, yeah, he bought the books. Mm-hmm. He was, was deep into it. Um, and he told me this on a really, we had a really fleeting conversation where he, he, he dropped it like, oh, yesterday was Tuesday. You know, like he just said it like it was a normal <laughs> yeah. thing. And I was like, oh, 
hold on a minute. And then we <laughs> never got back to the conversation. He, he, we, like other things happened and whatnot. But he'd probably be a guy to get on. Yeah. He would be a good shout to get on because, yeah, he did. He 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 was fully into it. He followed, uh, funnily enough, I was with him in Brixton and he went, and he went past the, the academy and he was like, yeah, I went to see David Icke here, man. I was at that Shoot show. <laughs> was you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So yeah, he'd be a, a, a good guy because he was, again, someone who was fully into it. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not into it anymore. What was the thing that he oh, said yeah, to you? Yeah, 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 we definitely. No, he was just told me. I just that he, told you that he was into David Icke. Yeah, that he was banging into it and then he'd come to Brixton. He'd, he'd like watch the, the show that he had there. And yeah, he used to be fully, like he said, he'd not the only show. It wasn't Brixton wasn't the only one. He'd been like, around the country. Oh, wow. Around the, like, to, to, to watch him see his uh, stuff whatever the stuff it is that he says he's into the lizards right yeah yeah David that's people yeah, yeah that's him yeah I'm on, I'm on the other great old arc arc bowels now and try and pick out some of the lines yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you know what it's funny you talk about the uh, the vaccine though mm. today um we had autism training it's the inset day today so no kids and we had autism training in the morning mm. and the woman's coming and she's got a big projector up and it says what are the um myths and truths surrounding autism and one of the things was vaccines cause autism so i'm sitting on the table and i was like all right that one's a myth and the lady next to me and i i still can't get my head around it she said no 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 that one's true because my niece had a vaccine and then she got cancer what and I, right okay yeah and <laughs> yeah and i was just kind of okay i'm not going to speak to you anymore like there's, there's a lot to unpack there, isn't there? It's difficult to call someone a fucking idiot when they've just expressed that their niece has got cancer, like. But, but yeah. I would have been so tempted, and like, <laughs> like, so yeah, like, oh wow, that that is uh, that's tricky. That is. Yeah, it was, and it was the funny thing was that like it was the vaccine that caused autism, right? And I've I watched the, uh, I think it's H Bomber guy. Yeah. Yeah. I watched like a three yeah. hour oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. debunk that one. Yeah. that he did on that. And he went, he like his research was thorough, mm. like very, very thorough. In. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the, the guy's been struck off. Uh, he's been thoroughly debunked by a lot of different people. Andrew Wakefield, yeah. Him. Yeah. Um, so I know, I knew, okay, that one's not true. That's a myth that a vaccine's called autism. And then she said, no, no, that one's true. All right, where were you going with this? And then it came to cancer. I'm like, it's, that's not even an option on the board. It's not on there. It's like, that wasn't there. It didn't say vaccines cause cancer, true or myth. It said autism. And then you just like, yeah. And the, and I, the funny thing is that I've seen another colleague of mine, when COVID first hit, she was convinced it was 5G. Mm. Um, and I, I'll never forget standing just in the corridor, listening to her and just trying to explain to her like, do you want like go and just look at what 5G is mm. and what 4G is and then try to put those two things together because it, that's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> um, and but you find these are like some of these are educated people. Yeah. They, they, they teach other people's children, you know, and then sometimes you hear them say something and you're like, I'm glad you are not responsible for the curriculum. You know, I'm glad that this is just a, a star from chat uh, rather than you 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 putting this into the into the minds of kids. But it's like it was just so strange. Mm. And um, again, like critical thought, putting two mm. ideas together, like okay, cancer, autism, vaccines. And somehow in her mind, she connected that all made dots. perfect sense. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I, and I just left it. I just, I, I tell you, what, I'm gonna turn my chair. <laughs> I'm gonna focus all of my energy this way. Like I, could, I couldn't do it, man. But, um, but it's interesting the, the way that you put it. That right? Because the thing is, although that doesn't make sense to anybody else, the reason that that's like a comforting thing to her is because it, it's closed the loop. She's got an explanation for why her niece got cancer now, right? Okay. And so, in a similar way, going back to right, what you're saying right at the beginning is like, how do you? How do you like convince people of, of stuff? You close the loop in a different way. So basically, if they say something like, well, you know, chemtrails are definitely real because we found aluminium in the soil, you need to provide 
another plausible explanation for for why the aluminium's there basically Aluminium. like you know i mean close the loop in, in a different way and in in that way you can you can hopefully sort of like move people away again some people aren't going to because like it, it, the reason again that a lot of people do a lot of people have like not just conspiracy beliefs all types of beliefs it's a shorthand for i don't know and it troubles me that I don't know. So I just yeah. need to have something where I can just go, that's that, good. Don't have to think about that anymore. And like, you know, just get on with, with your day, basically. So, right. But yeah. So, like a measure of a way of controlling things that you can't control. Exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. This is the thing. And the problem yeah. is that we live in a world now where basically you can't control anything and you're bombarded with like a, a billion messages every like, like, tw- like every second, basically. And you've got a constant audience because you're on social media who probably don't care what you're doing. But in your mind, you think, oh, they're, they're expecting me to react in a way. What if, I can't leave this. I can't, can't be punked by this person who said yeah. something uh, who I've never met. I don't even know what country yeah. they're in. Like, <laughs> like, and, um, and this is the thing. Like, uh, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's a tricky old world. I say, I think it's... Uh, like being a teacher, uh, particularly with young kids, like it's yeah, it's it's really admirable because they, God, it's a scary world out there. It terrifies me, and I'm an adult. Like so, you know, and, and these these kids, they are just uh, they're immersed in it, aren't they? Poor sods. Yeah, and they they're just soaking it all in. And like I think, um, again, like wider context and stuff, but. Where you would have had, like, we're roughly the same ages, sort of. We, we're all pre-internet. Yeah. So where you would have had to find a book or a map, you would have had to go and find the literature. You would have had to go and seek it out and search for it yeah. and then and, and, and take it all in. And then in looking for it, you would find, all right, well, here's another book on the subject or here's something else or here's something else. And that would take you further. Now it's just, it's several bits of information, as you said, per second. Mm. So they're taking this bit. And they're not thinking about it. They're just saying, oh, that's true. Someone said it is true. And then it gets pushed aside and the next bit of information comes in. Oh, that's true. And it, that gets pushed aside then it's the next bit. And they're not thinking about these things. So they're getting contradictory messages. Yeah. But they're all true. Yeah. They're all true because they're coming so fast. They don't have time to think about it and analyze it and, and kind of, all right, well, how did this go in? And they're like research. I mean, you lot must know the amount of people who do like YouTube research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, do you know what sources are? Do you know what like what peer review means? How like you're citing things that you don't they, understand. They, they're, uh, yeah, yeah. This completely like I read on Facebook years ago, right? Um, that they stopped making vinyl records because when you play a vinyl record, carbon is released into the air. Now melanin absorbs carbon, mm-hmm. so black people were getting stronger by listening to records. Right, so they 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 got rid of vinyl. Right, right? this is a whole thing that I read, and I thought I, I have to, I have to find out more <laughs> about this. <laughs> so I started doing my googles, and then what I discovered was it was actually another loop. Mm. Right, so the original article sent me to a different article that sent me to another article that linked me back to the original article, and it just went round and round like that. So then I thought, all right, how do I get out of this and look into something? Then I, what I did discover is that carbon is emitted when you play, uh, when you put a needle on a vinyl record, carbon is emitted. In order for it to have any effect on a human, you would have to listen, to do nothing else but listen to a vinyl record for like a thousand years. <laughs> you just have to put it on, press play, and then even then, what you feel would just be negligible because things don't work like that. You know <laughs> not how it goes but it was one of those things when i saw it i thought i need to I, i'm fully intrigued i have to know more about that and then looking at it looking at the, the loop like well then it's not right is it the person who's telling me is sending me all the way around to just to come back to him again yeah and i think a lot of people they don't research things in that way or they'll is they're stuck in the same little bubble where they're it's the same five people yeah, yeah, telling yeah. them the same thing. And they're like, well, it's, he, it's not just him, it's him as well. And it's him. So three of them can't be wrong, can they? And you're like, well, fair enough. Mate. No, <laughs> no, you're spot on, mate. 
I mean, you know, one of the <laughs> annoying parts about research as well is quite a lot of it is sp is spent reading something, getting to the end of it, and going. Yeah, that was no use at all. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. But but at least at least I've I've eliminated it from the pile, basically. So <laughs> but yeah. During COVID, one of my friends sent me a, a WhatsApp message, an article about I can't was it what the vaccine did it something to do with what the vaccine was doing. And within the first line, there were three words I did not know. I did not know what those three words meant. So I just messaged him back. I don't know what that means. C can you explain those? He didn't know what it meant either. But he was absolutely convinced that this this article had all the information telling you what was going to what the vaccine was doing to you. Da 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 da. And literally in the first line, three words. I had no clue what they were, and nor did he. And the, how do you like? I, you know, but yeah, absolutely. But this is My the thing, blood. isn't it? Like you know, everyone everyone's a shorthand expert, or it was this thing like. Yeah, there's these really fashionable at the minute to just like, oh, I'm not interested in what experts are in. Are you sure? <laughs> but they're the experts. The clues in the title. Like, it's like, but yeah. But, it's well, we can right blame there. the Tories, can't we? We can blame all the Yeah, it was uh, Michael Gold, yeah, right? Exactly. Well, Gold yeah. came out with it. Yeah, there like, we we've had enough of experts. Yeah. And it's, what, what do you mean? Even as a sentence, just that sentence. Did, how do we live in a real world, man? How, like, how is this real that you can say we've had enough of experts and no one bats at Ali? A lot, and, and uh, the media class were like, "Well, maybe we've have had enough." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, what are you talking about? These it's, people, yeah. these these correct people telling us facts and <laughs> yes. with, with just unerring accuracy. We're sick of it. Just bored yeah, to tears. Well, I bet. It's like, like I said, my brother. My brother will tell me. Um, there's a gay agenda in school. Ah, they, they, they're trying to make the kids gay. And bro, one, that's not how homosexuality works at all. Like you, you can't make somebody gay. That's we, like that's number that one. Is... Second of all, I work in a primary school. You haven't been in one since 1984. <laughs> like 84 was the last time you was in a primary school, and you you know that there's a gay agenda. Yet you and you're telling me who works in a primary school, and you're convinced of it, and you're not listening to me at all. And I, again, it's just that, like, where where, where, where are you going with this? How did you get this information? And how are you so certain? How are you so sure that it, it, there's this agenda of to, to turn people gay? Like, bro, just, like, read a book. <laughs> read a book about biology, basic biology. Mm. And like, we'll settle this once and for all. Do you know what I mean? Just go it's, meet yeah. some gay gay people. Yeah, that would be another thing. That yeah, just go just go and get a gay <laughs> friend. Just, Talk just, to them. Yeah. Because funnily enough, like as a kid, I'm I'm Catholic on both sides of my family. One's Irish Catholic, uh, one's Dominican Catholic, mm. but they're very homophobic. So I grew up. I grew up listening to dancehall. Which is quite homophobic music. Yeah. Uh, rap is not the most gay friendly music in the world. Not really? Um, so, until the age of about 28, I was quite homophobic. I, I can say, yeah, I was homophobic. Um, and then I met someone at my workplace, met a guy, got talking, became really good friends. And it just so happened he likes men and I like women. Um, but we became fast friends from working in the same place. And that was the thing that made me realize, oh, Everything that I'm thinking about, like this, this weird mythical gay creep, like this, this thing, that like, it doesn't. He's just a just a geezer. He's just a, <laughs> just a, dude, just a geezer like me. Work, works with me. Um, all the, the only difference is when he goes home, he lies down to somebody like not the same as me. Yeah. And the funny thing is, both of you do the same thing. You don't lie down with the people I lie down with either. <laughs> yeah. So how is it my business? And then as soon as that. That little mind open, and now and, and from then, yeah, now I, I don't tolerate you can't be homophobic but, around me anymore. But again, that, that's, that's perfectly expressed. It this is the thing with conspiracies, isn't it? That's the difference between like believing the hype, believing the, the, the trope, or believing the thing that's been said, and experiencing it for real life, or, or going and finding yeah. it out yourself. And, and that's the perfect example, isn't it? How basically, like, you know, the two are often completely different, basically. Yeah, so different. The reality of something, and it, it's funny. Um, like growing up mixed race, I have been in rooms full of white people who have said stuff about black people that I knew wasn't true. 
And then on the flip side, I've been in rooms full of black people saying stuff about white people that I knew wasn't true. And I'm like, how like, how can both of you be so wrong about one another? Like, you, you lot should get together and be friends. <laughs> the world would be a much better place. Yeah, uh, um, yeah it, it, it is really weird how people get caught up in the, uh, the idea, the idea of what something is. And they put all their eggs in that basket mm. and they did. That's, yes, it's that. And they hold on to it so tightly. And yeah, you don't have to, man. Like your life will be a lot better if you let it go. If you just let it go, like you'll be way happier, man. And if you concentrate on you and not that, you'll be way happier, man. Smile. Smile. The whole world would be if we all did it. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, I'm very conscious that we've kept you for um, for over an hour, Tony. Like, uh, and uh, you've got work and whatnot tomorrow. Although it's, it's an absolute pleasure, <laughs> I'd love to do this again. Um, like, oh please, um, any time that you lot are ready, man. Yeah, any time, yeah, yeah. genuinely, this has been great. Yeah, no, awesome. definitely. This has been great. Is there anything yeah, that you same. want to plug, like your, your music or anything like that? Like, cause... um, do you know what? Yes, um, uh, go and stream the Tony Smith show. It's on Spotify, Apple, however you listen to your music, it's on there. Um, and the Tony Smith Show 2 is almost finished. So that will be coming out uh, early next year. Um, watch out for my solo album coming next year. Oh, yeah. um, and if you can make it down to Stratford um, on Saturday, the 4th of November, uh, we are at... Hold on. <laughs> if you can make it to... Uh, the Queen Elizabeth, what's the West Ham football ground called? That place there. What's that there? We are celebrating um, East End culture, and I am battling. Uh, I'm trying to find out where it is, and I don't have that details because I'm not really a details kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> details um, will be but- in the details on the podcast. We'll get there on there. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you very much for having me, gents. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you very much for coming on. It's been it's been amazing. Brilliant. Thank yeah, you. Amazing. Yeah, thank I'm gonna you. look out for the one you do with Ark. I'm gonna be interested yeah, yeah. in that one. <laughs> in a time of mass information. In a time of mass propaganda. In a time of echo chambers and mass debates, who can you trust? Who can you believe? Who knows the truth? And who will dare call it conspiracy? Some dare call it conspiracy. Starring Neil Sanders and Ridley. Conspiracy.